Well, hail, come back everyone to the second part of No Rolls Bard Plays Dread. I am your host for this hoedown of horror and I'm joined by... Hello, I'm Holly and I'm playing Hope Pocket. Hello, I'm Adam. I'm playing Marcus G. Fairmont. Hello there. I'm Chili Steele and I'm playing Mother Hardy. Hi, I'm Laurie and I am playing Friedrich Fordersky. And I'm Sullivan and I'm playing William H. Dayeft. I've just worked out the joke in your name. Reach for the sky. There it is. Friedrich. Friedrich for the sky. <laughs> <laughs> just trips off, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really good when you give it the full German pronunciation. Yeah. Reich. <laughs> Reich, Reich for, for the sky. sky. <laughs> Climb every mountain higher. Reich for, for the sky. <laughs> and on that Bavarian bombshell, <laughs> let's begin. These five poor souls are taking a transcontinental journey from the opulent city of Bersedeje in the east all the way to the town of Grave Rock in the far west. The train they are travelling on, a exquisite luxury train. However, despite the quality of the decorations, they have had a less than luxury experience, having to contend with a desperate gun-wielding man, a subsequently unexpected corpse that required tending to, we were able to take a brief stop in a lovely bar where some people had something nice to drink and some people were treated as a tall drink of water by someone very nice. <laughs> After this brief period of rest, however, the train needed to take its scheduled water break and our five Western heroes, seems like a strong term here, made their way to the trading post of Nupa for a bit of fresh air. It is there that some items were found. A man of God was met in a place of potential sanctuary and a past sin rose up from the ground for retribution. Before we start in the churchyard, we are going to look back a little bit to earlier this morning and check in on five people waiting to catch a train. A man in a dark suit sits in a station, surreptitiously drinking from a small bottle. An expensively dressed young man buys a special hat for a special journey. <laughs> a moustachioed man paces up and down his garden, wary of the time, but distracted by something he sees through the window of his most hated neighbour. A young woman finishes a conversation with someone they talk to a lot and then begins on a new journey. And a sweet old lady is standing in her kitchen making snacks for the road. But that was a while ago now, wasn't it? And we find ourselves in a moonlit churchyard, a bleeding giant of a man reaching huge, meaty mitts out towards a cowering Marcus Fairmont. Uh, sh shoot it, for God's sake! I don't have a gun! What do you mean you don't have a gun? Are you a cowboy or not? I just have a hat! You have a ridiculous hat! <laughs> How dare you, sir! Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna run in the direction of the church. Make a pull. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, I thought the same oh, thing. Fuck. I thought they might be loose, but they're not. They're just not, are they? None oh, of them sorry. are loose. Oh, 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 so oh, oh, oh. Good, now the middle's going to be unstable. <laughs> Once we get that down to one. <sighs> you bolt across the mud. Adrenaline and fear powering your body like a locomotive and you sprint towards the still partly open door of the church. Friedrich! I'm going to dive behind the grave. <laughs> You're going to try and hide? Yes! Well, that is a pull. Ah! <laughs> no, no, Friedrich! <laughs> He's everyone's favourite, Friedrich. Oh, Andy this one... written on the sole of his shoe. It always seems like this. Oh, oh. No, 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 this one. Oh! Oh, Chill out, guys. <laughs> You're not oh. helping. <laughs> You've done it. Oh, <sighs> lovely stuff. Oh, look at that hand. Oh, that was really good. Good. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, you die behind the back of a cross. 
Um, it's easily enough to hide you from this figure who has only one person in mind. Mm. This, this commotion <laughs> unheard by the four of you inside the peace and quiet of a church. Could I go towards the candles in the church? You are welcome to. Um, uh, Father Picardo is not looking at you. He seems to be focused quite hard on Mother Hardy. Okay. Oh, a gonna... toy boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk up to the candles. I'm going to pick up a candle that's lit. And I'm going to say, I'm going to whisper real quiet. You still here with me, Nelly? Did you make the trip? And I hear nothing. You hear nothing. But you feel very conscious of the box in your bag for a moment. The father is still looking at you. His gaze hasn't moved in a while. Mother. Well, you can always count on a man of God to see behind the facade into truth. Uh, Father, tell me, why do you stay here when uh, it seems to me you don't have a flock? We couldn't see anybody in the town outside. He looks incredibly sad for a moment. What happened? Those are two questions. If I leave, I do not know where I am going to go. Hmm. And if I am honest with myself, I fear I will not like where I end up. Father, how did... Why did you call Mother Hardy here, Mother? when we first entered this church? Why is not important. I just... You remind me of me, you know. It's a feeling I get. I recognize when someone has done something that has maybe left them a little unsure of themselves. Well, yes, I have been humbled in the eyes of God many times. As I'm sure you we all have. But I... I feel as though you're deflecting, Father. <laughs> I don't understand why you'd... you take interest in the... in the woman such as myself. How well do you know your Bible, Mother Hardy? Well enough. With age, I, I don't remember some of my favorite passages anymore, but I have them all here. Earmarked. Why? Is there a verse you'd like to share? I'd love to hear it. There is. You know the book of Exodus? Hmm. 22 2. Mm, I can't recall it. Something about a thief. Something about guilt. And then, boom! Bursting through the door, Marcus Fairmont. Gun! Don't you stand there, Hope! Give me your gun! I'm not giving you a gun. You seem to be in a very agitated state. Hope we are under attack. I know you've got a gun. Hand it over. I'm, I am not joking around. I'm gonna run in the other direction. How far back does this church go? Probably only about 20 seconds run. Sir, you stand down. I'm not giving you a gun. You do not want <laughs> what is after me to be after you too. Please, I'm sorry that I'm agitated, but I need your gun now. I'm giving it to you. I'm gonna take it from you. Okay, so the way that contested pools work in Dread, contested, <laughs> is like this. If, if a player wants to do something to another player, the player on the receiving end of that action can always just choose to decline. It's designed to keep player conflict to a minimum if undesired. However, if the player is happy to accept that action because they find it interesting, you will make a pull to see if you succeed. If you succeed, the defending player can then make a pull to try to negate that success. And that basically continues as a back and forth until so until somebody uh, until somebody decides to stop pulling. Um, you have the prerogative just to say no. They're not going to take your gun. Here's a little heads up for you. I'm not going to stop. You can see the determination in this man's eyes. Okay. I'll give you this gun. You got to tell me why. I'm being attacked. By what? There is something out there in the darkness, something I do not know what, but it is coming after me. And you think a gun's gonna fix it? It is a start. Okay, you fire no more than three rounds of this gun, you give it back to me. That's the deal. Do you understand? Fine, please, just give me the gun. Give him the gun. 
You hear heavy footsteps pounding through the mud outside and they are getting closer. I'm gonna rush outside with the gun. You burst back through the church doors. Um, <laughs> you can see the mustachioed face of Friedrich peeking over the back of a cross and then halfway between the two of you, the lumbering red masked figure. I am going to level my gun at him and say, I knew I should have burned you. And I'm going to fire at his head. Okay. Aiming for the head. Make a pull. Oh, shit. I will say... You can make one pull. Take your best shot. Live with the consequences. Or... Oh. In the cold, in the dark, with your body shaking, with that little bit of booze still in your blood, stopping your hand from staying steady. You can make two, and I guarantee you that bullet will hit home. Only a little bit of booze. <laughs> Have you tried just apologising? <laughs> <laughs> you had that whole hip blast earlier before. Put me down for two. Oh, I would do one and see how it goes. <laughs> you can always, you can always pull out, and you can always pull out of the second one. Yeah. Oh no, 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 that's not coming. Somewhere here. Yes. Very good. Yes. And you can go higher up in the second one, I think. Okay, you aim, you pull the trigger. I'm gonna do two. There is a flash of gunpowder. Make a second pull. <sighs> Time slows. No, no, gotta no, go no, higher. no, you've gotta go high. This one might shift. Ooh, nice. Push it the other way, push it towards you. Yeah. <gasps> careful, push it. Gentle, push it gentle. gentle. Oh, okay. It's not over yet. No, yeah, that's the thing. That, that top thing can always get you. <sighs> With this monstrous figure lit in the moonlight of a churchyard, you holding the handle of a smoking gun, you would expect something dramatic, visceral, but there's just a wet <whistles> figure stops and with an almost pillowy softness, falls into the wet ground and is still. Can I run out after him? You may. I hold out the gun for you. I take it, I look down at what the fuck this is. I'm going away. Thank you, Hope. I'm gonna go inside. I would like to find Mr. Daft, please. I'll take you back inside. Father Picardo is still sitting with you. Is there something you'd like to ask me about, Father? You do not need to confess anything to me. I think I'm a little past that now. And maybe there was a time I could offer you something comforting. Ah, oh, my dear Mrs. Hardy. There will be no comfort for you. God be with you. Don't worry, Mrs. Hardy. Whatever you did, I'll give you a presidential pardon. God is so unforgiving. We were never going to get along anyway. <laughs> All right, I, I think I've had my share of hospitality in this town. I think I'll be seeing if that train is uh, ready to depart. If anyone needs me, I'll be on the station platform. She gets up to leave. Okay. Uh, Friedrich, you have been so excited about being out in the Old West. You have embraced every bit of danger, every hazard, every thrill that matches the thrills in your stories. And here, finally, some real epic drama. Mm -hmm. And here you are. My heart is pumping. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> pumping. <laughs> I'm going to go look at the body. You make your way through the mud. You approach this prone giant. His face is a mask of blood. Slim, stiff. There is something to be found here, if you're willing to look hard enough. I'm out here with you. Oh. Do I care enough? I just wanted to see it. Hey. 
don't want to miss out. This is some of the real West out here. I don't want to miss out. But are you ready for it? Oh. Ever seen a body like this? You seen a dead body? <laughs> Power of peer pressure. Yep. Yeah, well, I can always back out. Yes, just that is true. I'm just looking. It's just a body. It's just a body. Oh, it's just a Jenga tower. What could go wrong? No, Jenga tower. Yeah, it's not a bad chance. Oh, shh. Stop making noises no, while we're, we're working our magic. I think you're good. Great. Yeah. Oh, it's wobbly, oh, isn't it? It is wobbly. Good lad. Well done. Lad. I've got to put it on top now first, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difficult bit. Oh, oh, calm the fuck so down! Right it's really tense! Slam it on! Oh. Calm down! Just drop it on! Every Just time you it. do it, it's Just throw like, it on top. Oh. Like, yeah, that's, Laurie, the, no. that's the thing that makes me go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Laurie, don't do that! It's part of the experience. <laughs> You notice a couple of things. Mm. The most striking part about this body is that monstrous bloodied face. Yeah. And there are two wounds that are immediately apparent to you. One, a strangely fresh mark, but something you recognize almost inexplicably as being the dent of a shovel of some kind. And then for a brief moment, as a bolt of lightning flashes behind you, you catch a look at the left eye, and for a heartbeat, see a scarred and familiar face, blinded, and then gone. You okay, honey? Yeah, yeah. I think Herr Fairmont. I think he killed this man, but not not today. Or well, today also, but before. I think he is a murderer. He said my hat was stupid. Your hat is stupid. <gasps> but you know what? We've all worn stupid hats. That's fine. You tell me this man died twice, that's stupid. I think there's an issue with the language barrier here. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a stupid hat. And this man couldn't have died twice. This man think he did. In that case, I'm going to take out, I've got my candle. What's the weather like? Cold. The wind is present, but not unworkable. A slight drizzle of rain is picking up. I've got a bottle of alcohol, I'm going to set this body on fire. Because if that thing's fucking come back to life once, I'm going to take that shit out. That is going to be a pull in this rain and wind. <gasps> Okay. I can't not be a pull. I'll, just... I'll give it a try. <laughs> we'll see what happens. If you are out there, Django God, she did call my hat stupid. <laughs> <laughs> don't deserve, don't okay. deserve it. Yeah, after that. I mean, that was uncool. That was uncool. For... Let's see, I'm, I might back out of this. So rude. <laughs> nope. Nuh uh. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so dark. Because even testing them is mm. stressful at this point. There will be one. Mm. There's always one. Gosh. Middle of those three, maybe? This one. Just I think you've got to yank. What about You're gonna the have other to give side? Good, yeah. That one. Do it quick before it realizes. That one. Above. <laughs> it this one? Yeah. 
You're right, yeah. Tilly. Perfect. Good job, Tilly. Well done, Tilly. Oh, on hand. Don't say that too soon. Go on. Very good. It's not over yet. Yeah, it's not. Ten. 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 Nine point five. Ten. Ten. She's okay, I open the bottle of strong smell of fluid I found in the storeroom. I bathe the body in it, empty the whole thing over it, and I lower my candle down towards this corpse. And I set it alight. The flame is small at first. It seems to focus around that eye when you look at it. This isn't something you see. And then, very quickly, that strong smelling moonshine engulfs the rest of the body. And it is now ablaze, lighting up the churchyard in a way that is both horrible and beautiful. There is a... From the nearby station, through the mist, you can make out again the long, black, serpentine shape of that wonderful train. I'm sorry for calling your head stupid. I'm, I'm stressed. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to follow him. Look, I'm sorry. You told me a guy died twice. It's a very fine hat. I'm sorry for hurting your feelings with it. I understand that hat is incredibly important to you. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry, very genuinely, I'm sorry. And if there's anything I can do to you, with you, for you, to make it up for you, with you, to you, <laughs> just let me know, okay? In time, I may forgive you. <laughs> I appreciate that. And I follow oh. him back to the train. I am going to head after the train too. You too? I'm already on my way. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm on my way. I would like to walk up to William H. Daft, if I may. Nerves on fire having just seen something from my past, which I find incredibly distressing, blinded by panic and rage and betrayal, I would like to walk up to him, whisper, never trust a politician, and take my flask and hit him in the face with it. First question, you can reject this straight off if you want to. If you want to take it, it's gonna to have to pull. You're gonna to have to pull. <laughs> <laughs> He dies from lack of alcohol in his system. <laughs> it's the one thing I wanted you to get me. Oh, fuck. You could take it to the middle. <gasps> the middle's loosened up. Turns out I just really wanted to hit you. <laughs> Reject it. <laughs> oh. Now, you can take it, or if you want to avoid it, you can make a pull. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to be, Mr. President? <laughs> with a fucking fight. <laughs> Face your electorate, Mr. President. <laughs> Answer the hard questions, Mr. President. I think I, ha I do deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> On balance, maybe. I will take this. I will take this, I think. Yeah, I will take the flask to the face. Like any good president would. So <laughs> noble. <laughs> you don't turn the other cheek, nope. take a flask to the face. Yep. <laughs> I will let you determine how much it's damaged you. How much How much would you like that to have hurt? I think um, if any you know regular person had hit, had this flask to the face, it would hurt a reasonable amount. This is the worst pain he's ever felt <laughs> in his life. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a new enemy. He's a soft man. <laughs> he's so soft. He's never. He's barely ever scraped a knee. Like he doesn't. He doesn't know what pain is. Oh my God, <laughs> Jesus! Oh, oh, you're gonna regret that. You're gonna have the might of the American military coming for you. Why would you ever hit me with a flag? I got you that lovely whiskey. Don't you like it? If he, if he, if you're doubling down, I'm gonna hit you again. <laughs> I got you a lovely whiskey. It, it, it isn't my fault if you got rain water in it and made it all taste like water. I can tell a cheap whiskey. I can tell a cheap drunk. My father was a cheap drunk and I am not my father. I will grant you the opportunity to apologize for betraying me. 
or we will continue our confrontation. All right? I apologize that the rain got in your flag. I'm gonna hit him again! <laughs> I'm, I'm, every, this has been the worst day of my life. I'm going to hit you again. And you will get a chance to. However, the horn goes off again. <sighs> this ain't over. When I get an opportunity, I will make you meet the professional side of my acquaintance. And when I am president, I'm gonna give you a really boring cabinet job that makes you go mad with how bored you are, like agriculture or defense. I don't know. I'll give you one of the most boring ones and you'll go crazy. And then I'll say every day, oh, everyone in America is sad because of the stupid Mr. Fairmont who's ruining America. If only I could fire him, but he's been drinking too much of the whiskey. That's a lot of words typical of a politician. I got five words for you. You will never be President. Last call. I'm gonna wait until the train. Wait, what are we gonna do when the, when the train? We better go get the train though. We need to go up and get better sleep. But when we get on the train, oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, when we get on the train, we're what gonna, we gonna oh, do. We're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go. But we do need to get the train. Yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, get yeah. on the train. <laughs> let's get back on the train. It's like and kiss. Like what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it in the train. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, we'll go. <laughs> okay, everyone. The five of you make your way back past the trading post. The mm. uh, weather is kinder to you on the return trip, and you find yourselves outside the train. The perfectly poised figure of Pierre standing atop the steps, waiting for you. I hope you enjoyed your fresh air. It is good to get out while you can. And of course, uh, please keep hold of your tickets. The conductor will be along to take them very soon. Ollie. Yeah. You hadn't noticed this before, but it looks like the name of the train is written on the side of the carriage. Oh yeah. Weather's pretty bad though. Sands up. You've got to get inside. Maybe this is something you don't need to know. No. Oh. Maybe. You know what? Sometimes finding the truth isn't the most important thing. And I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Is it a pull? Pull. pull. It doesn't have to be. Pull. You can go inside that train. Pull. 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 Look at you, dude. Yeah, that was a That was move. you. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to see. I may wild this out. The weather is just too poor for me. <laughs> I got old sand in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I might die by looking. <laughs> if I squint too hard, my brain okay. fall out. Let's have a look right here. Hey, Robert. Anything, anything in this region? In this region. What about this? What about this? Right there. This thing. Oh, that's dangerous thing. Mm. That's just creating more problems right. for people. Uh, understand? Understand? I can't see shit. Ooh. The weather is too poor. I head inside. You catch something of a letter as the sand clears for a moment. An O? An O. And then it picks up and you go inside. Okay. The five of you make your way back on board the train. The stairs rise, the door closes, and you're inside a little connective antechamber between two carriages. Where do you go from here? I would like to go back to where the body was last uh, left by me, and I would like to check on my handiwork to remind myself that I am a good undertaker. You make your way back to the carriage you started this journey in. I'm going to the bar. I've got some, I've got a man to speak to. 
I'm also going to the bar. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm also going to the bar. Well, uh, I want to be alone and read my Bible, so uh, I'll watch where the others go and I'll go the opposite direction. Marcus, you pass through a couple of empty carriages until you find yourself in what you feel confident is the drawing room come passenger car you started in. It's hard to tell because they're all decorated identically. It's a little warmer in here than it was. Lying neatly buttoned up, the prone body of Quentin Stone. Quentin, do you know why I became an undertaker? It's because I believe in being able to say goodbye with grace. My father was not a professional man, not a professional at anything really. He, he went out west when I was a boy. He was rummaging around in the mud, looking for gold. In a lot of ways, he's always been rummaging around in the mud. He used to write to me, I have the, the last letter he ever wrote to me in my pocket. They never found his body, Quentin. They, uh, he was a drunk. He, the only thing he was ever good at finding was the bottom of a glass. One night he came home from whatever prospect he was working. He must have been drunk. Fallen into a ravine or a pass or I'm carried away by the river, but they never found his body. Without a professional around, you're left to the sun. And for a professional that, that stays with you. I'm sorry, Quentin, that I didn't give you my best work. And I tap him lightly on the chest. Tap him lightly on the chest. Okay, we're going to cut to the bar now. Hope. Is Bobby here? Bobby is here. Behind the bar. I walk up to Bobby. Oh, Miss Pocket. Nice to see you again, Bobby. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything of yours in the, at the stop. It looked like that place had changed. Is that so? I really wanted that whiskey. <laughs> he smiles at you. It's almost a smile of respect. Well, I can't give you the whiskey. That was the deal, but I think you still deserve a drink. And he reaches behind the bar for a bottle of tequila. Mm. A long, dark shape at the bottom, and hands it to you. Friedrich, sullenly sitting at the bar. As you enter, you see Cora Love, still sitting in the booth, eyes fixed on you, red lips, and a warm smile. There's a moment where I consider going to sit on my own and sulking. But I go and sit down with Cora. There's my beautiful. Buffalo. William, you're the last one to enter the bar. Just before you make it, you catch a glimpse of something in the corner of your eye. It's a small figure, scurrying almost. <laughs> a high titter on the air. Did you see that? Was that something? Do I have to make a ball? <laughs> what would you like to do? I'd like to see it. Or see if I can see it. I would say you can turn around for free. I can turn around for free? I can turn around for free. <laughs> I'll quickly turn around for free and then see if I have to make a pull. No! <laughs> You definitely saw something small, almost childlike, just run across the gap between carriages. Um, I'm going after it. Mother Hardy, sitting on your own, 
the Bible, engrossed in the book. Shaken by what the father said to me. <sighs> Just flipping through the pages. Slightly irate. You feel the cushion move next to you. Someone sat down. Mademoiselle Adi. Anger is not a colour I have seen on you before. Do excuse me, Pierre. That was a strange town we stopped in. I'd quite like to uh, keep my head down and make it to our destination. Hopefully, without someone shooting another gun or anything strange happening. There is one thing I can guarantee to you. You will reach your destination. I know why you're here now. And he smiles, a genuinely kind smile. Well, all right. Paid a lot of money for this trip. Is there a buffet card? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps some early bird special. <laughs> <laughs> and all you can eat. <laughs> Do you do a curry club? <laughs> do you do a pensioner's fish and chips? <laughs> so a pie first, and a pint. <laughs> uh, first, madame, I cannot take your tickets. You need to save that for the conductor. Oh, God. All right, well, I'll, I'll but, wait here for him. Uh, we do not have a buffet, but... You tell me what you need, and I will bring you your supper. Oh, well, I... Very unfussy. Whatever you have to hand, so we'll be fine. Take I will see what I can rustle up. Thank you. I'll just be here with the Lord. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Marcus, you rest your hand on this person's chest. Is a pat or a rest? A pat. A pat. And then a rest. A pat's fine. I want to give it a good, a good go. Oh, some moves around the table, please. My heart can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> You've sewn up a lot of bodies, Mr. Fairmont. Post suture, they feel different. This one doesn't feel like it's been worked on. I feel, I place my hand back, trying to press slightly on where I made the incisions. You don't feel anything. I rip you... open the clothes. Perfectly healthy flesh. Hope. Bobby, would you mind getting us two glasses? I've got some stuff to talk to you about. <clears throat> well, I don't think you'll find your answers with me. That's fine. I don't need no answers. I just want to talk to you. Well, Share some tequila. We can always talk. But we understand I'm in the business of saying this. But the answer you want, it really is at the bottom of a bottle. <laughs> Friedrich. There's my big strong man. Why so glum, Buffalo? Full on love. What brings you out to Grave Rock? What do you think the West is? Not nah, Buffalo. To me, it seems... <sighs> Stories I read, the tales I heard, they all said it was a land of adventure, of wonder. You could go and you could make yourself anything you wanted to be. And I'm beginning to wonder whether or not I'm not cut out for that. Everyone I've met here seems twisted up by this place. Well, that's hand in your cheek. My big strong boy. You could say I've been a little twisted up by this place too. When I look at you, I think I see what I need. Looks around the bar. Will you come with me? 
Mein Gott. Okay. <lacht> William. <lacht> you follow this scurrying figure and you find yourself in one of these identical drawing room passenger cars. You're not alone this time though. Standing on the other side of the car, this diminutive figure in a dark hat and coat, shocks of red hair falling across their shoulders. Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> What? William, uh, William the Child. <laughs> It's been so long, William. Uh, I haven't seen you in, in such a long time. Uh, how have you been? Two things. William. Number one. Where's my money? Number two. That's not my name. You are standing in the presence of the person you have tried to avoid ever since you offered to look after something for them. Wilhelmina William Boot, a.k.a. William the Wild, a.k.a. <laughs> Wild Bill, <laughs> a.k.a. No. Due to a diminutive stature, an estranged relationship with word choice, no, no. and a tendency to hiccup whenever they speak, has been misnamed by you in the press as William the Child. Where's my money? William? No! Oh no! I didn't, I didn't, oh I didn't, I didn't. Now I can explain. I know you gave me that $5,000, but I put it in the campaign funds and, um, and, and I'm gonna become the president, you see? And I got $30 left and I got 400 pamphlets in my suitcases. Um, um, uh, it, it, I, but when I come, become president, I put it, I wrote it down on my pamphlets and I'm gonna give uh, 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 Wilhelmina, the, 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 uh, you know, William the child you uh, uh, one uh, uh, one million dollars when I become president so we're fine the geese really <laughs> wow the bourgeois boat <laughs> why are you doing this why Bill why Bill why why would you do this why would you do no answer me why Bill I'm a Robbie <laughs> Wild Bill wants some wild bills from you. you know, <laughs> wild That's the cowpoke of the day. <laughs> cowpoke cow of, of the day. Wild Bill Hiccup is here for love. Wild Bill Hiccup will get another glove. Wild Bill Hiccup, he's gonna get Sullivan Bo Brown. Wild Bill Hiccup will drive him out of town. I don't care. You become president. I want my money. Where's my money? Give me. My money, will you? I'll tell you who has your money. Um, there's a man on this train. <laughs> His name is Marcus G. Fair. <laughs> oh, he's <so> man. <laughs> He actually has your money. I remember and I said to him, uh, would you like to, 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 to take this money off my hands? It's getting too heavy for my pockets. And, uh, and he said, <laughs> why, of course I'll take it. And, and he said, you know what? If anybody comes and asks for this money back, uh, I, I, I might lie to them and say, I've never heard of this. And I said, that's a weird thing to say, Marcus. But, but That's what he said. Definitely. Never trust a politician. <laughs> Wilhelmina well, I mean, scuttles up to you like a greased cockroach. <laughs> Um, and when the second, this wicked knife is held up underneath your chin. If you're lying to me, I'm a skin you. And I'm a like it. To convince Wilhelmina that you're telling the truth, <laughs> I'm gonna need a pull. Mm -hmm. no! <laughs> I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna slide back. I'm gonna slide back, I'm gonna slide back, I'm gonna set the table for you, son of a boy. <laughs> I'm gonna take off these. <laughs> take your pick. These ironically make seeing much harder. <laughs> Okay, okay, here we go. 
Brooke's yeah, gonna kill you. <laughs> I mean, life imitates art, <laughs> imitates life. Okay, now. Is this one? <gasps> no, 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 no! Kidding. <sighs> but it's, there's so much let's do. You're Willy and the Childing. It would have been. Oh. Yeah! No! Yes. No? Yeah. yeah. Unreal! <laughs> okay. Fuck. Fuck. Brooke Fuck. is gonna kill ya. <laughs> Why are you coming for me, Wild Bill? <laughs> Why are you with me, Wild Bill? <laughs> if we put this buses back on, that pull has bought you a little time. The blade mm. leaves your throat. I believe my man is on this train. And I know you can get it for me. Of course, I'll go and get your money right now. Um, uh, um, what? Um, yes. Um, uh, I just need to uh, work a few things out, but um, you'll have your money in no time, I'm sure. You find this family, man. Bring me my money. Or oh, I'm gonna skin you. I'm gonna like it. <laughs> okay, Wild well, Bill. Anything that you want, Wild well, Bill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Who am I to be visited by? <laughs> what strange ghosts from the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Brooke. Brooke, Brooke versions of Brooke. There are no strange visitors for Mother Hardy. Mm. There are no ghosts. There is only her. And her good book. Well, maybe I'll trot on down to the bar, get myself some more of that sweet tea. You make your way to the bar. Marcus. Uh, I kind of like start to claw at the chest and like, I, I think I'm fairly much lost my mind at this point. So I'm going to take out my uh, scalpel and just dive it into the chest. He, I have to make sure that this one is dead. You drive that scalpel through the chest. There's a slight scrape as it slips across a rib bone. Nothing. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm going to pour myself a drink. I'm going to look at the bottle again. And I'm going to see this. It's a dark shape, kind of cylindrical. Is it moving? No. no. Is it? <laughs> no. Cylindrical. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pour myself a drink of tequila. Just a little short. How do you uh, come by such uh, rare spirits, Bobby? You could say it's been a, a bit of an interest of mine. Right. I've been doing this a lot longer than you. I can see that. <laughs> Didn't even know. <laughs> This stuff could be real till today. What uh, makes you think it is? I mean, you knew me before I knew that you knew me. <laughs> we all know you here, Hope. But you're right. Beyond that, someone was through here about a month ago. Spoke very highly of you. She seem okay to you? A cherub like that? I think she's going to be fine. Well, to her, <laughs> and I take a drink, I down my drink. Friedrich, you and Cora, alone now in another drawing room. We passed through a couple to get here, and aside from the bar, all these rooms are just the same, exactly the same. Mm. And they're still getting a little warmer, at least where you are. My buffalo. Do you know why I call you my buffalo? I would assume the great big Bavarian moustache. Looks a lot like buffalo beers. Well, yeah, I look at that mighty mane of hair and I look into those eyes and I see something I've seen before. The dumb, innocent face of a useless old cow. Oh, my buffalo. 
the West twists people out here. <laughs> but I think you know that, don't you? She takes a couple of steps back, reaches her hand behind her waistcoat, and quick as a flash, pulls out a revolver. I know you want to be a hero, boy. Now's your chance. Reaches into our other side, tosses you a revolver. Yes. Yes. William. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, have I been let go by Wild Bill? Okay, I, I, I'm racing through the carriages, uh, trying to find uh, Pierre. Um, oh, you find Pierre. Um, you race through about three, four, five, six carriages, seven. And there's Pierre. Ah, uh, Pierre, um, we, we, we need to stop the train immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just very quickly, I, I just um, realised I left something back in the old town, but I don't want to stop the train myself. So I, I'll just stop the train, I'll hop up, and you go as fast as you can. Uh, you go you go far away from here. I, 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 I'll just walk back down to that old town. I think I left my uh, 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 my pamphlets there, of course. <laughs> nobody's going to be voting for me there. There's nobody there. Can you stop the train? <laughs> you sit after. You want to stop the train and you want to turn around? Uh, well, I'll turn around, but the train could keep on going on its journey. I, I wouldn't want to stop you or anything. Uh, when was the last time I heard someone talk about wanting to stop the train? Hmm. It was recent, no? And uh, what happened to them? Oh, well, um, they... Uh... All right, plan B, uh, do you have $5,000? <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Daft, uh, you cannot run from your problems. You cannot buy them out. That is not what this place is about. What is this place about? Beer. You're being very spooky. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have, if not bigger, more immediate problems than the nature of this train. I'm going to run to Marcus. You make your way into the bar. Only people inside. Barman sharing tequila with Hope Puckett. I recall what was the verse the priest mentioned. And I flick through my Bible to find it. Exodus 22, 2. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. Hmm. So I'm not guilty, but why did he make me feel so guilty? Oh, none of this makes any sense. I don't think this train is going to Grave Rock. And I just sit down. She sits down at a nearby table and is just staring at the, at the passage, trying to understand. Hope. How big is the um, entrance to this uh, carafe filled with tequila? Can I get the, the worm out? The bottle of tequila is on the counter in between you and Bobby. If you want to get to that dark object in the bottom. You're gonna have to chug it. Bobby? Tell me one thing before I do this. What's the name of this train? Why do you need to know? Closure is all. <laughs> You're looking for closure. Is the irony of that not lost on you? I take the craft and I try and down all of the tequila. <gasps> chug, chug, chug. Down it, my God. <laughs> uh, Paul, 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 Paul. Paul. <laughs> No way. 
No way. Oh, that's just raised the likelihood of me dying by so much! <laughs> <laughs> you gulp and gulp and gulp and it goes down so easy. Within a matter of moments, the bottle is empty. There's nothing but a dark shape on the base. You think you see it wriggle for a second, but no. It's perfectly still. You can shake it out if you want. I'm going to shake it out. You expect something softer and wetter to slap into your hand, but all you feel is the cold metal of a key. Ooh! Keyhole in the box! Spooky box! Spooky box! Open the spooky box! Open the spooky box! Don't come over here! Go in the spooky box! Don't come over here! Go in the spooky box and don't come over here! I think we're coming over here! I just checked a whole bottle of tequila! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the gun has been tossed towards you. Hmm? Uh, Friedrich has caught the gun and he's sort of turning it over in his hand and feeling the weight of it. And not looking at her, he just says, Do you know the last time that I held a gun? My father took me shooting. I was much younger, and I was, I was being stupid, a real dumb cop. And I, uh, I was playing soldiers, and the gun went off. It tore up the whole left side of his face. Fortunately, or well, I guess unfortunately, he, uh, he survived and uh, became quite strange and cruel and strict and I was uh, never allowed to go shooting again I wasn't allowed to do much of anything again well what are we here a dumb little rich boy with daddy issues <laughs> you see the thing about guns is might have set me on a difficult path for a while. But I won't let them be the thing that holds me back from the future. Ten paces. One. Two. You know how many silly little boys I've met? Three. Four. And how many silly little boys I've shot? Five. Six. They all fall so deeply in love with who they think I am. Seven. Eight. Kind of earned myself a little nickname. Nine. Ten. So tell me, my little fantasist, my little Alice, tell me how it feels with the Red Queen bearing down on you. Draw. I turn and fire. Mm. That is going to be a pull to aim. And that's going to be a pull to hold your nerve, <gasps> squeeze the trigger, and take another life. One pull for accuracy, one to see if you have any true grit. Mm. Come on then, Friedrich. <clears throat> Do it, Laurie. What's left? Yeah. What's left? I think, I think so this, is two this middle one might be worth tapping. You see? No, no, turns out not. No, it looked like it had a gap. This one might go. Yep. No. <laughs> Shush. Um, what about the second to top layer? Here. I'm sorry for what I This guy. That's going to leave too much of it. That's probably too low bearing. Oh, I can't do two hands. That's my aims. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Okay, let's get it done. We'll get it done. We'll take a pause. We'll move forward. Oh, look at that hand. It's holding his nerve. You spin. <laughs> you hold the gun steady. It's trained right on her heart. But can you pull the trigger? Can I pull the trigger? What about that little one in this? This one? Yeah, yeah. 
Just just test it. I think Alan I pushed this one. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see any of them that don't not all taking too much weight. Mm. Mm. It's this layer here. Yeah. Pisses yeah. me off. Yeah. I want it so bad. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Is that too many leaning that way? <gasps> so okay. in the wrong place. You're also allowed to go around the table, Laurie. What? Don't fall. <laughs> you love me. Stay up. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> you can do this. Your head's not this. stupid. You can do it. You're a real cowboy. You're a real cowboy. You're a real cowboy. Real cowboy. Come on, cowboy. Got such a cool hat. Yep. Such 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 a cool cool. hat. It's honestly the coolest of the hats that we have. It's really put me off. (laughs) (laughs) Breathe. Ah. A flash of gunfire, smoke, and we cut to William. I, I run, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, and eventually I presume I get to Marcus in the end. Marcus, oh, it's a pleasure to see you. I just wanted to apologize earlier about that whiskey thing. Anyway, that's not the point. Do you have $5,000 on you? You notice, as after you say this, that Marcus is currently on his knees in front of the body of Quentin Stone, who is now sitting bolt upright, wheezing through his throat. Uh, he's not staying dead. He's not staying dead. None of them are staying. Are you on a mine? Did I bury you? No, 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 Are no. you back? No, Marcus. Marcus, you did not bury me. I've always been alive. No. A dead man cannot run for president. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I've buried I'll so many. You. I could have buried you and you might be back to try and finish me off. No. Don't get any closer. Listen, listen, listen. Calm down, Marcus. Okay, okay, just just come with me. We'll, we'll find everybody and we'll try no, to No, no, you out. stay back. Uh, you stay back or I'll gut you. I, I'll kill you again. I've, I've killed again before. No, I, I put I put Glenn in the ground for a second time. I can do it to you. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's fine. You don't. You never kill me once. You, you, ha, you aren't going to have to kill me again. Listen, Marcus, this is going to be okay. Just put the scalpel down. William. As you two are facing up against each other, Marcus is focused entirely on you. You see now, rising up from behind him, the figure of Quentin Stone, madness in his eyes. Marcus, turn around. You stay back. No. Turn around. Quentin's behind you. You're going to try and jump me. Marcus, oh, he's behind you, Marcus. Marcus God damn it. Turn around. Do you want to pull to see if you notice this in time? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh. It looks real appealing. Yeah. That, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easy, that's how you do that. <laughs> you, you see the way he's looking at you, that he's not laughing, there's something behind you. I, I turn and uh, if I see it, I'm gonna try and cut its throat. You damn fools! There is no way out! Mother hard. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm just sipping my tea. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing strange appears to be happening to me. Uh. As you approach the bar, you see Hope in conversation with Bobby Boyle, looking at something in their hand, seeing all transfixed, and Bobby just turns to you. Mrs. Hardy, how can I help you? Uh, well, just another sweet tea for me, please, Bobby. Another sweet tea. I'm going to have to cut you off sooner or later. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they might serve some food soon? I'm sure Pierre is getting that ready for you as we speak. Hmm. It won't be long now. Well, you know, it's Mother Hardy, isn't it? That's what my uh, students always call me, yes. Yeah, you're a school teacher, aren't you? I was long ago. Hmm. Bobby. This train isn't going to Grave Rock, is it? Would it change anything if it was? I suppose not. I'll take that sweet tea if it's all the same to you. You said you loved sweet tea. You're exactly how we described you. Hmm. 
Ronald. He was here too? They all come through here now. Sooner or later. Go in the same direction as me? I realise I'm being a hypocrite here, but why are we all so worried about direction? I suppose I, I'm, I'm worried on his behalf as to where my Ronald might have ended up. There are people I worry about too. Did they come through here? They all come through here, ma'am. And you have to serve them? For now. What did you do? Well, I got a little too curious. Let's just say that curiosity persevered. Hmm. I think I'll stay ignorant. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could do the same. Um, because we had you two together, we're now going to go to Holly. Bobby, I'm sorry to say this, but I lied to you. I think you probably already know that. <laughs> but I found your box and I've got your key. If it's all right by you, I'd like to see what's in there. Well, it's not my box and it's not my key. I didn't have the stones, you could say, to open it. Well, I think you're braver than me. I think just knowing <clears throat> where I'm going and knowing Nellie came through here too, I could do anything. I can open a box. A very bad man once said, the worst voice is our voice. And here it comes. I don't think you need to know what's in the box, but I'm not here to make your choices for you. I don't need to. But I'd like to see what's in there so I can share it with Nellie anyway. And you know what you have to do? I'm going to open it. Is this a pull? This, this is a pull. Oh, God, excuse me. To use a key. Oh, a pull. <laughs> it's an old box. Read, read. Yeah, it's a right rough area though. Yeah. Next one down. Yeah. This guy looks that guy looks really good from this corner, but it might not be so good. hard to tell though, isn't it? <laughs> You've just gotta keep poking it. <laughs> That's horrible. Mm. Okay. You don't need to know. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to know. None of us need to know. I don't need to, but I would like to know. Just yeah. for Nelly. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Tom brought a prop, so you have to open it. Yeah, you do have <laughs> to open it. Yeah, it, is a, it is a locked box. <laughs> oh my god. <gasps> yes, yes. What? Yes. No. Yeah, poke it back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, You're okay. Going, okay. Going, it's it's not shaking right now. Keep going. That's it. You're okay. using two hands. What's that? <sighs> Brunelli. You're okay. Oh. You're okay. You're okay. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Stop. Has stopped. Short, short, swift tug. <laughs> anything, anything swift. Don't let him know it's going. <sighs> and the dismount. Okay. Put the key in the keyhole. You turn it. There is a click. As you reach for the box, Bobby puts a hand on yours. It's there if you want it, but you might not like what you find. Thank you. I 
I think whatever I find, I have already everything that I need. <laughs> I don't care what's in this box. As far as I'm concerned, I have everything I already need. <laughs> I have one of these with me myself. Don't we all? <laughs> i tell you what, Nellie's going to find that funny. I used to always read her tarot. I can't wait to again. Should I get the opportunity? Well, I better grab my bindle. It was nice talking to you, Bobby. We'll see you around. What other way to go is there? And I'm gonna take the card with me. What card is it? It's the Fool, um, or the Madman, um, which is the first card in the Major Arcana of the Tarot deck. It's the person setting off on their journey. Oh. Mm. Mm. It's like the first person getting all their things together and they're kind of foolish, they're kind of mad, but they are setting out. Oh, don't come over here. <laughs> <laughs> Five poles. <laughs> to see if your hat falls off. <laughs> and if you do, you die. If it does, you die. The smoke clears and you see in front of you, prone on the floor, the form of Cora Love. You surprised me. Like I said, Cora. Twists you up. And I reach in behind my back and pull out of my back pocket the well thumbed copy of Alice in Wonderland. And I say, You called me Alice, you called yourself the Red Queen. I never bothered to finish this book, though I read it all the time. I didn't like the bit where Alice woke up, where she left the Wonderland. I throw it onto her body, take the pistol she gave me, put it into the back of my belt, adjust my hat down and say, but I guess we're through the looking glass now. And I walk out of the room. Gentlemen. Oh, oh shit! shit. Oh, oh, fuck. oh Jesus shit. Christ! Oh Jesus shit! Oh, oh God. God! Oh, oh no, though! Fucking no! Oh, fucking shit. no! I tell you what, there's even more shit over there that I haven't even told you about. What do you mean? There's a tiny killer coming to kill us both. What the fuck are you talking about? I owe them five thousand dollars. I killed a man, I think, and I'm not sure, and I buried him. Oh, it's just all coming out. Oh God, this is terrible for us. Should we, should we stab this man? I'm gonna kill him again, yeah, I think. I think you have to kill him again. Uh, I'm gonna try and just like, just just stab him to death, please. Okay, <laughs> so you're trying to stab him to the point where he's no longer a physical threat. Yes. Um, I'm gonna say that is a pull to murder a violent man, and that is a pull to do it under such extreme duress. All right, let's kill this guy <laughs> twice. <laughs> Just loosened it up. <laughs> yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. You get a grip on the guy, you get your scalpel in hand, and you start stabbing. Stab and you stab and you stab and you stab until the fight slowly goes back out of this man's body again. And two sweaty hands try to gain purchase on you. It don't work. It don't work. I, 
I tried it myself. And he points towards his bloody shirt. And don't work. And then collapses to the floor. William. Yeah? We, burn, we gotta burn him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go into my bag. Yeah, yeah. I, got, uh, I got all sorts of fluids in my bag. Yeah. Uh, bring me the nitroglycerin. We're gonna make sure he never comes back. Oh, there's no time for that. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm Bill. A pleasure to see you again. Um, uh, this is my good friend Marcus G. Fairmont. I was telling you about him earlier. Ah, shut up. Now, which one of you two boyfriends has got my money? Uh, oh, well. I don't know anything about no money. I'm uh, just trying to get out of here alive. Uh, listen, well, Bill, um, uh, have you ever thought about this? And I'm just gonna, you're just gonna go whack her. <laughs> well, 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 whack him in the face. Whack, whack him in the face. Okay. Well, it's Brooke, but it's also so Wild just Bill. Punch Brooke. You're just punching Brooke in the head. Yeah, in this manic situation, so stressed um, that it's gonna be two pulls. Brooke is ace. Two pulls. Wild Bill. Wild Bill, Wild Bill. Wild Bill, Wild Bill everybody. Yeah, like Wild Bill is a seasoned psychopath. Yep. So it's good. they have the advantage on this, so it's going to take two pulls. Okay. Um, two pulls to just get purchased on Wild Bill. Oh, and no, it's just, no. <laughs> oh, God. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah, you, you're sweating so much. Oh, God. It's going to be easy. Oh, I don't Go from right by the top. Go from right this one right by the top. Or this one. Or this oh, one. Right there, you can go there. You can take that. You can have that. It's, it's just given it to you. He's had it. It's just given it to you. He's done it. He's already done it. It's just dishing out. Don't, don't, don't love this. Um, yeah, so you do have to slide that to the tipping point. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, that's nice and level. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I was not the cause of that. Somebody <laughs> dropped it on the top. <laughs> the cherry on the top couldn't resist, could you? In a flurry of desperation, um, you lunge at Wild Bill. Manage to knock Wild Bill to the ground, get a grip on them. They are slashing away at you with their wicked knife. It's tearing your clothes, but your body is still fine. Can I get my nitroglycerin out? Yes. I'm going to go into my uh, bag, pull out my nitroglycerin. Uh, I'm just going to throw it in the direction of uh, all of them, <laughs> of, of, Wild, of Wild Bill, of the body, in the whole carriage. I, oh, I, I want this all to stop. Okay, so you're throwing, where are you throwing it? Uh, at at um, Wild Bill. Okay, um, that is going to be nitroglycerin, especially back then, man, is a very unstable substance. Sure That's is. going to be a fair few pulls. <coughs> We're going to take your first pull just to get it out of your bag without it blowing up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it is my job to make sure they stay buried. Oh, no, not that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, no. Oh, dear, no. Oh, why would you do it like that? <laughs> we are running oh. out of road here, folks. Yep, I think you're my boy. Oh. Come to me, my boy. It's coming so easy. He wants to come. He wants to. I... He wants to be there with you. Father. Oh, my God. Fuck. How are you doing this? You're being so rude to the tower. <laughs> Before your next pull, we're gonna go back to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, mate. <laughs> um, Bobby <laughs> Sweet chokes on a sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> Just explodes. Pull for someone to do the Heimlich successfully. <laughs> <laughs> I choke on my egg salad sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the mints. <laughs> Bobby has gone back to taking care of the glasses and now two people sitting at the bar. Someone who feels maybe at the start of a journey. Someone who is maybe at the end. Well, I don't know what any of that was about, but it certainly sounded important. Mother Hardy. Yes, dear. You're a woman of God. I am. Has anyone ever read your tarot? I think years ago there was a traveling circus in town and very charming young woman read my cards, but I 
can't remember it being particularly uh, noteworthy. She said I'd have a long and happy life with my Ronald, which I did. Why do you ask? We got some time. I've got a deck. I could read yours again. Well. It won't make no difference. <laughs> Doesn't seem to. <laughs> but it might pass the time. It might pass the time. Please, by all means, read my tarot. Okay, we're going to go back to the madness in the other carriage. <laughs> um, so that's one pull to stabilize the nitroglycerin. Yep. Um, now you're going to have to aim it and throw it. That's two more pulls. And go. then we'll see. No. Oh, he's, been, he's been buoyed by his early success. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh my God. Jesus. How? How is he getting away with this? It's disgusting. God, it doesn't make keep sense. getting away with this! <laughs> this is insane. Mm. Oh. See, now it doesn't No, 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 no! <gasps> oh, Icarus. <laughs> How close to the blocks you flew. <laughs> Those waxened blocks. <laughs> Ordinarily, we rebuild the tower as soon as it falls, but let's deal with this first. You have skillfully moved the nitroglycerin out of your satchel. You have aimed it in the air, but as you go to throw it, you remember the day you packaged this stuff. You had maybe a little bit too much to drink. You maybe weren't quite as careful as you should have been. There is a blinding, deafening, red hot, searing flash of light and pain. For a moment, you are in agony, and then. as the ringing in your ears fades, smoke clears. You are standing in an empty carriage. You can just about make out in the doorway the figure of Pierre. I would get your ticket ready. The conductor will need to check it. Train attendant Terry, the glass, please. You have until the sand on this glass runs out to make your peace with whatever you want to make your peace with. Twenty-one years. A good few of those twenty-one were me and my prime. A professional man. Someone who took great diligence with his work, but there was a demon. It feels like it was sent all the way from my father. A demon from Death Valley, perhaps, or somewhere else where there's gold and failure and desperation and sadness. I got older and it became harder to do what I do. I began to resent the younger undertakers. Uh, they didn't seem to take their craft seriously. They're all playing card games in the mortuary. I remember when morticians were real men. Back when the West was truly wild. I feel like I've come to the end of my rope. And that, before I ride off into the sunset, out in the west. Some streaks are meant to be broken. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry I thought so little of you. I'm sorry, Glenn. I thought you was dead. God, I hope you was. Sorry to everyone who I packaged under the influence. 
and rob them of the dignity of their last repose, their last ride. Is there nothing else on you while this runs out that you want to check? Oh, Dad. I know. And you might not be proud, but I'm more like you than you could ever know, and I wish you'd been around to see it. The room now is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. There's almost a, a haze now of heat, and it seems to be coming from the door at the rear. There is a rusty squeak, and then the door opens silently. A tall man, broad-shouldered, in a fine suit and a cap, steps out, the shadow of the brim concealing his face, and he holds out his hand for your ticket. Putting a gentle arm around you, he slowly walks you to the door. The heat is unbearable now, like a desert sun beating down on a forgotten corpse. And then the door closes on Marcus G. Fairmont, 21 and 0. Earlier this morning, Five strangers went to get a train. A man in a dark suit takes a few more sips surreptitiously from a flask. Had quite a lot to drink this morning, but all this liquid is still not quite enough courage to make this trip. He goes for a little walk out into the marsh, but under the haze of alcohol and the heat of the sun, he collapses. And in the wilds, Forgotten. A handsome, young Bavarian man, on holiday in the West, feels he needs to look the part before he starts his journey. A slightly desperate looking man convinces him to buy a very specific hat. As he parts with his cash and walks off, a big smile on that innocent face, a voice from behind him. There you are, Cody. I knew I'd find you. Crack. It's a cursed fucking hat. <laughs> Before leaving for the train this morning, William H. Daft is performing his usual three hours marching up and down his lawn. <laughs> and then he spots something inside the house next door. People. Music. Is Abernathy Cornwallis having a party? And were you not invited? Why, all the neighborhood is there. As you walk up to that window and squeeze your face against the glass to see who's turned on you for your most hated rival, you don't hear the hiss and slither of something coming up behind you. There's a sharp pain in your ankle, a dizziness. You call out for help, but the music's too loud. A young woman, enjoying a last bite to eat from boarding the train. A conversation fresh in her mind. You're reminded of your parents for a moment, and then you look at your hand. That bite's been getting worse and worse. You've been looking a little jaundiced recently. Can you make it to the train? Or is this journey of discovery at an end? A sweet old woman or what people would assume if they looked at her. If a long life full of love, full of good service, but weighed down by secrets. A good long life. One of the last thoughts that move through your mind is there's a tightness in your chest. It was going to happen sooner or later. And now, you're back on the train. 
A recently twisted man leaves the room with a new perspective. An ambitious politician can't outrun his debts. A young alchemist learns the folly of answers as she reads the tarot of someone who's finally made peace. A young man in a well-cut but inexpensive three-piece suit watches all of this. Well, let's uh, get on with it, shall we? And that is all for our game of Red Dread Redemption. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Get on board. Get on board. The train. <laughs> it was a ghost train. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>